to start with Liz, because I, I think that the labor movement has been at the forefront of adapting and evolving with each technological change. How is now any different? I mean, is it just that we see all these things and hear all these things and we're thinking, oh my gosh, it, you know, it, the robots are coming? Well, first I just want to say thank you, um, of course, to Sherry uh, for moderating and all the panelists up here today, but most importantly to SAG-AFTRA. Uh, because you've been leaders uh, when it comes to technology and really pushing the labor movement uh, to be here. And you've been here for about 10 years, right, uh, at CES? So I think this is an important moment. I just want to say thank you for your leadership, Gabrielle, Rebecca, David, all of you um, and the team. Uh, also, I want to introduce Rusty McAllister, who's in the room. Where are you, Rusty? Uh, our state <laughs> fed leader in Nevada, and Deb Burko, uh, Las Vegas Central Labor Council. because. Your question is, is so apropos as we've walked around Las Vegas over the last 24 hours, really seeing the tremendous amount of money uh, and capital that is surrounding us with this technology. And I haven't had a chance to go over to the show quite yet. Uh, but as I've seen the people walking around with their big badges, um, and then I come back to this hotel, to my room, and I talk to the room attendant who is um, you know, cleaning my room. I talk to the folks on the casino floor who are, you know, putting in a hard day's work for a hard day's pay thanks to that Unite Here contract detailer. Uh, and I see the, the reality is so different, right, that the people at the show are, are excited about a, a toilet paper robot, but the folks who are actually doing the work in this country are falling farther and farther behind. And I would argue uh, probably are a bit fearful of technology because of the lack of the connection that they have to the, um, the conversations that are going on, uh, all of the innovation processes that are taking place, the development uh, at you know, some of these universities and um, places where technology is, is really on the march. Uh, we need to have work, working people's perspectives at those tables, and that's the one thing I hope people take away from this summit is that the future of work has to have working people at the forefront of it. And all too often we're in these rooms and there, aren't, there isn't a worker to be found at those tables. And so all of us need to leave this, um, you know, get at those tables and bust into those rooms. Um, I guess my, my perspective is it isn't a new conversation because the labor movement has been dealing with technological change throughout its um, origins, I mean, from the very beginning, right? We've been adapting and changing to technology. And in the past, with the technological revolutions we've seen, some people say this is the fourth industrial revolution, uh, that it, we've had greater union density uh, in the past to be able to help make those transitions smoother and to help ensure that prosperity from the, the gains in technology are actually shared more broadly. And so I look to uh, unions like the auto workers, for example. They're no strangers to technology, right? But they were at the table because of their collective bargaining. They were at the table because of the power that they had in that industry to sit as equals at the table with their employers and say, if you're going to bring technology into this workplace, then we're going to have a voice and we're going to have a say in how it's used uh, and be able to negotiate a way to make that less traumatic for the workforce. So I believe we can make this a less fearful and um, less dystopic uh, kind of future for working people, but only if we make the choices now to make that happen. You're, you're hit with resistance because at the very base level, there are a lot of teachers who are afraid of, of losing their jobs to a computer. Well, that's right, that's right. And of course, the interesting thing is that what we found is that the technology can't replace with the teachers, right. right? It can never replace, you know, the uh, the impact of a, of a human relationship. I mean, one of our partners in this project has been this wonderful uh, NGO called Saga Education, right? And they're committed to providing personalized instruction in U.S. School, schools as a way of dealing with the achievement gaps that exist across across ethnic and income groups in our schools, right? And of course, those reflect, you know, you know, incredibly brutal histories of inequality, right? Um, but Saga realizes that it's going to be very hard for them to offer this personalized instruction at scale without technology. But their mantra is, the students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. 
right? I mean, s algorithms are not going to be able to inspire these students. Algorithms are not going to be able to embrace these students. Algorithms are not going to be able to love and believe in these students in the way that human instructors can, right? So actually, I feel like the technological revolution is going to make human instructors more important than ever, but it's going to change their role. So D Taylor from from Unite here, explain what happened with with Marriott and and the story there with technology coming in and how they thought it would help make the rooms uh, get cleaned faster, and it turned into a disaster. Explain that to us. Well, I think the disaster was the strike that they took. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but um, it really didn't start with Marriott. It actually started here in Las Vegas. Uh, I came to I, I come to the CES show about every three years because I kind of want to know what the future looks like, and I came and I, I went home. My wife said, "How's the show?" And I went, "Oh shit, we're in trouble," because <laughs> I said, "If they can figure out how cars can go through the streets without drivers, they can figure out our jobs." Um, and so I delved into to a lot. Somebody referred earlier to the McKinsey report. The McKinsey report actually said on technological change just here in Las Vegas, 50% of the jobs that we represent would be gone in 10 years. Um, so we got very focused about technology. And it was funny, we brought up in negotiations first here, which we almost had a big strike on, and then Marriott, they never want to talk about that. They go, well, you know, that's management prerogative. Um, and at first, you know, workers are like, what are you talking about? Uh, you know, it's not like they live and die by this, but once you expose what's going on out there, they're like, same re reaction I had. Um, so uh, part of this was to make sure a few things. One, the company had to give us at least six months' notice. Number two, the definition of technology is really important. They want to make it a very small definition, but whether it's algorithms, platforms, or robotics or automation is really important to have that in uh, comprehensive. Um, and then, you know, we were honest with workers. We said, listen, these jobs are going to be in three different categories. Either you're, we're going to have to get some retraining in your job to do it with the technology. Number two, your job's going to be a combo. You're going to uh, work with technology in a totally different way, but you're not going to be left behind. And then there are going to be some losers. And I hate to say that, there'll be some severance issues and what that means. Um, in Marriott, along with every other company, um, there's been a strong resistance because they really want to have free reign there. Um, it was one of the issues that almost led to a big strike here uh, last year. It was certainly one of the issues that had to strike at Marriott in eight cities last year um, because companies want to have complete discretion without workers having a say. So. Um, uh, I, 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 I'm not getting Marriott an easy thing, but it's not just Marriott. It's every company we deal with because we deal with also food service, which is like cafeterias and food processing. We deal with hotels. We deal with casinos. Um, and in each one of those categories, it's always they always resist the kind of language that I have sort of outlined because, listen, companies want to have their say. And the, the real problem we have, I think, is there isn't a politician in this country that's talking about technology and its effects on workers. Every single city is basically wanting to bring technology in because it is a new industry. They're not thinking of the consequences of the workers. And I think unless the labor movement steps up on that, along with others, um, uh, whether it's 800 million or 8 million, no matter what the number is, there hasn't been a thought through public policy about this, and I think that that's long overdue.